Hey there, welcome to another edition of What's Hot with CU Tranquility. I am your host, Pete Pardo, publisher and CEO of SOT. Today is Wednesday, August the 16th, I believe. Yes, it is. Summer's almost over, guys. This kind of sucks, right? But hey, you know what? We still got great new music coming out each and every day to kind of get us through, take us through to the uh, fall and winter seasons that are coming, at least if you live here in the U.S. Um, so anyway, let's just jump right into it. We've got some really great new stuff that's come out recently. We're going to kick it off with the latest from Teutonic German metal legends. Of course, I'm talking about Accept, The Rise of Chaos on Nuclear Blast Records. Look at that bad boy here. So, of course, this is the fourth studio release with Mr. Tornillo, Tornillo, Mark Tornillo, on lead vocals, formerly of T.T. Quick. Uh, he has replaced Udo Dirk Schneider. Uh, we've also got <clears throat> a new guitar player and a new drummer. Um, but, you know, Mr. Baltese and Mr. Hoffman are still in the lineup, of course, uh, they've been kind of, you know, they've been there from day one, right? So uh, with Wolf Hoffman on guitar, it still sounds like an Accept album. And I dig this a lot. It's a very strong album. I will say I don't think it's as strong as the three albums that have come before it. The first three with uh, Tornillo on vocals, which were, you know, the second you put any of those three on, they were just like just hit you in the face, so powerful and great. Um, this is also, like I said, very strong. I just, I'm not, I'm not feeling that immense power and instantly memorable songs. And, you know, it's got a lot of the same elements. You know, Andy Sneap did the production. Production is fantastic. This album sounds great. Uh, half of the songs are just really heavy, great riffs, great vocals, you know, driving power metal, classic metal tunes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, a couple of tunes are a little generic sounding. Um, some of my favorites are Die by the Sword, I like a lot. A uh, Hole in the Head, the title track Rise of Cast is very good. Not nuts about the Kool-Aid song, kind of silly, but you know, whatever. Uh, Analog Man is all right, um, but Carry the Weight and the last tune Race to Extinction. Race to Extinction, I like quite a bit. That last one's pretty epic. So overall, a very strong album. I don't think it's as strong as the three that came before it, but you know what? I It's kind of hard to keep up that level of consistency for any band. So, But, you know, give kudos for another strong album, except they're still out and kicking. They're getting ready to tour here soon, so make sure you catch them. With that, we're going to uh, move over to a legendary, well, another legendary uh, musical force. This particular guy has been around since the... Late 60s, early 70s, uh, he fronted the Alice Cooper band, which eventually just became Alice Cooper. Uh, his latest, it's his first new studio album in six years, is called Paranormal. Really good. Uh, comes as a two-disc set, so the first disc is a whole new album of new material. Pretty strong. I like it. The second disc has two songs uh, performed by the remaining members of the original Alice Cooper group with some various other musicians uh, helping out, and uh, some live tracks from 2016 from the current live band playing some, uh, some classic tunes. So, you know, of the uh, the new the new material, I, a lot of it I like quite a bit. It actually has that classic Alice Cooper vibe. You know, the title track, Dead Flies, really, really good. Fireball's good. Uh, Dynamite Road is decent. Holy Water Rats, you know, uh, Para paranoia personality is kind of fun. It's a good album, heavy in spots, you know, other spots it's got that kind of tongue-in-cheek kind of, uh, you know, uh, Alice tries to inject this kind of like humorous horror theme thing going on there, so it's really fun. The two new tunes by the original band, uh, Genuine American Girl and You and All Your Friends, I like, I actually don't like though as much as the other songs um, on the album. A lot of guest stars on here, Billy Gibbons shows up on a, on a track to play some guitar, you got various other folks who, who show up as well. Um, my one complaint, oh, and the live tracks are great, by the way, because, you, you know, they're playing No More Mr. Nice Guy, Under My Wheels, Billion Dollar Babies, Feed My Frankenstein, which kicks complete ass, uh, Only Women Bleed, and School's Out. Uh, my one complaint is that they, they didn't ha take the current live touring band and bring them all into the studio to make this album. So if you're a Nina Strauss fan who, you know, <clears throat> is one of the highlights of going to see Alice Cooper, you know, in addition to Alice himself, you know, because she's, A, she's hot, B, she plays a ripping lead guitar, you know, she doesn't appear on the studio stuff at all. 
as don't some of the guys in the band. So it's just like, you know, he brought lots of his friends to help out recording the new songs, but I wonder why, you know, he didn't take the current full live band, get him into the studio and make an album. Whatever. It's still a good album nonetheless. So Paranormal, Alice Cooper, he's back just as good as ever. Make sure you go investigate that. Okay, with that, we're going to uh, hop on over to uh, some very good friends of Sea of Tranquilities over the years. I'm talking about uh, Ken Golden and his Laser's Edge family of labels uh, who have been releasing wonderful progressive rock and progressive metal and psychedelia and all sorts of uh, stuff over the years. Uh, we've been covering their artists for a long, long time. And uh, they've sent us some of their uh, most recent releases. And I want to make sure we give them a lot, of, give them some shout outs here. So the first is by a U.S. progressive rock band uh, out of Michigan, I believe. Hope I have that right. Anyway, I've been uh, very interested in these guys for going on about 20 years. They were kind of one of those first bands that kind of came about in that next wave of progressive rock here in this country in the early 90s. I'm talking about Discipline, Captives of the Wine Dark Sea is their latest. Okay. Um, you know, Matthew Parmenter, very, very good vocalist. He's got a really intriguing voice. Sounds a little bit like Peter Hamill at times from the, the great Van der Graaff Generator. The music here is a mix of vintage sounding progressive rock, little bits of jazz, some pop, a little bit of hard rock. I like it a lot. If, if you love that classic 70s prog style, a lot of elements of Van der Graaff here which has kind of followed them throughout their career. Really good keyboards, tasty guitar work, vocals are, are awesome. A lot of atmosphere. It's aggressive at times. It's lighter in other times. Really strong album. Uh, the Body Yearns and Burn the Fire Upon the Rocks kind of bookend the album. Strong, strong tracks, all sorts of different flavors in between. I dig it a lot. Happy to see these guys back. It's been a while since their last one. They've, you know, they they haven't been a very prolific band over the years. They haven't released a lot of material, uh, but all of their albums are well, well worth hearing if you haven't already. So check it out. Discipline, Captives of the Wine Dark Sea. Love that title too, by the way. From U.S., we're going to shoot over to the U.K. for Progressive Metal Act Prospect. Uh, the Illuminated Sky. This is their second album for Sensory Records. Sensory is the Progressive Metal uh, division of the Laser's Edge. This is, I gave this five out of five stars. That's how good this is. This is incredible progressive metal with ridiculous chops, crazy melodies, vocals that are off the charts good. I, you know, and there's, there's no fault you can make with this album. It is so good. It's very complex. The guitar work is incredible. Great keyboards. Like I said, the vocals are amazing. The tunes are instantly memorable. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of chops going on here, but there's some great heavy riffs and really interesting, intriguing arrangements. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of good melodies. It's not just a chops fest for sake of chops. Um, this is a, you know, if you like the heavier, more complex Symphony X, a little bit of Dream Theater, uh, maybe a touch of early Pain of Salvation. Yeah, maybe a little Van den Plas. Again, these are just quick little references. These band, this band sounds like themselves. Um, they have a very individual style, which I like quite a bit. And it's just from the first note to the end, it's just so so incredible. I, I can't say enough about this. Prospect, The Illuminated Sky. If you are looking for one progressive metal album to listen to this year, make sure you check that one out. Just about as impressive. Okay, these next two. Uh, this is a Greek band called Until Rain. In Your is their latest. Another really, really good example of progressive metal. Uh, these guys have a couple albums to their credit. This latest is extremely strong. A little bit darker than the pros prospect. Um, prospect sorry. Uh, maybe not as technical, but certainly very powerful. Um, you know, a little bit of Pain of Salvation. Maybe a little bit of Nevermore. Uh, clean, soaring vocals, a nice mid-range tone as well, the occasional growl, okay, lots of great chugging guitar riffs, you know, just a really, really strong album, check out our website, we've just, uh, over the next day or so, we've actually just completed an interview with the guys, that'll be posted there live, uh, but again, another very good, dramatic, textured, atmospheric, powerful, progressive metal album from Greece. 
from Greece, we're going to shoot all the way over to Australia. Another band that's been around for a bit. Damnation's Day, A World Awakens. Another fantastic album on the Sensory label. This is kind of progressive metal meets power metal. Uh, a lot of classic metal styles going on here. Again, really, really strong vocals. Really strong vocals. The guitars are super crunchy. Not overly technical. So if you are, you know, prog metal, the more technical prog metal is not your thing. I think you'll dig these guys a lot. Uh, Tomorrow's Eve comes to mind a little bit. Various other bands, but again, they have their own sound. Very, very melodic. Very memorable. Um, and I love the vocals on this. Just really, really strong, powerful vocals. Catchy tunes. Uh, just really, really potent stuff. So, again, there you have uh, four releases on the Laser's Edge and Sensory labels that are well worth your attention. Okay, from there we're going to totally switch gears. We're going to go over to France for a band that we've uh, we've reviewed a couple of their albums, and, and sometimes we're not really sure what to think of them. But the one thing for sure, when you listen to this band, you know you're listening to something completely different. Uh, I am talking about France's Haiku Funeral. Hallucinations is their latest album. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe these guys. You know, they're somewhat in the black metal style, the vocals, and, and I'm going to read you the, the names of the musicians here. So, well, first of all, um, the reason why we review their, their albums is because we're very good friends, have been for years, with uh, William Kopecky, an amazing bass player who does a lot of different things in prog and fusion and here with kind of like an extreme metal industrial thing. So um, Bill has actually, he's relocated. He lives in France now. Uh, I believe the vocalist is Bulgarian, I think. Could could be a Bulgarian or maybe he's from Brussels. I'm not sure. Uh, somewhere in that area. Uh, his name is uh, Dimitar Dimitrov and he's the vocalist. He is a basically a black metal singer. So if you like those black metal screechy raspy vocals, he injects that here. And then on drums we've got David Lilkvist and basically you know these guys it's kind of like industrial music ambient music with like black metal vocals occasionally the the arrangements hit upon black metal intensity but for the most part this is not a fast and relentless album by any means it's spooky it's chilling it's ominous uh it's it's a lot of electronic and ambient passages it, it's just a creepy listen it's an intriguing listen if you like kind of that more ambient side of the black metal spectrum i highly uh, recommend you give haiku funeral a a try they've got a couple other albums under their belt so high q funeral something different totally something different all right we're going to go over to moon june records uh leo this one's for you this is the latest from machine mass it's called machine mass plays hendrix if you listen to no cover albums this year okay and i know we get exposed to a lot of them this is the one you should seek out so basically mean machine mean Machine Mass, I'm going to say Mean Machine, uh, they are a trio of Mitchell Delville on guitars and effects and loops and things, Tony Bianco on drums and percussion, and Antoine Guinette on keyboards. These guys do an instrumental take on classic Jimi Hendrix songs, uh, kind of celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Are You Experienced album, which came out in 1967. Can you believe it? 50 fucking years, folks. God. God, am I old. Um, anyway, they, they play uh, ripping, roaring, instrumental versions of classic Hendrix tunes. If you can imagine, I said this in my review, if you can imagine a kind of meeting between uh, Terje Ripdahl and the Mahavishnu Orchestra, and I think I threw something else in there as well, but uh, whatever, it doesn't really matter, uh, ripping guitar work but more in like that jazz fusion style rather than, you know, Hendrix real bluesy psychedelic type of thing. Uh, great keyboards. And what I love about this album so much is that they don't play note for note versions of these songs. They totally reimagine and change them up and give it their own spin. So sometimes you're listening to some of these songs and you're like, I'm not sure I really recognize it, but this is really cool. Then all of a sudden you hear a little melody like, oh, I know that. I totally get that. That's the, you know, burning in the midnight lamp. Awesome. Love the way they did that. So, again, you've got uh, Third Stone from the Sun, Purple Haze, Little Wing, which is in incredible. Really, really good. Spanish Castle Magic, another tune that you start listening to, and you're like, I'm not really hearing it. But, oh, there's there's the part I recognize, right? Uh, Fire, Voodoo Child, like I said, Burning in the Midnight Lamp. Uh, you Got Me Floating, which is a total crazy you have to hear it to, 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 to understand and the wind cries Mary uh, you know it's just it's very very cool there's the guys there 
Um, I dig it. One of the more interesting and enjoyable covers albums I've heard in some time. Okay, we're going to shoot down to Texas. Uh, this is a band we've been in touch with quite a bit over the last year or so. We've been following quite a bit. We love their stuff. I'm talking about kind of this, they're a throwback to the heavy rock, proto metal, and doom of the mid late 70s. I'm talking about Blues Funeral. Awakening is their latest. Uh, another just really good collection of if you if you love older heavy rock, there's just no way you won't love this. You know, just imagine like Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and Uriah Heep and early Scorpions, because some of the guitar work here is just like Uli John Roth embedded in like Deep Purple and Black Sabbath arrangements. Uh, it's just really really good stuff. Hammond organ heavy crunchy guitars, very strong vocals, powerful tunes, lots of drama, lots of atmosphere. It's like soaked in the 70s, uh, little bits of 60s dripping in there as well, but that potent punch of the early 80s, it's all here, folks. You know, these guys are destined for great things. If you like their previous album, you're going to love this one. Just go check it out. Blues Funeral, Awakening, hot off the presses. Okay. Now we have another band that we've been working with at SOT for a long, long, long time. I am talking about the Rick Ray Band. This is their latest killing time. For those of you who know the Rick Ray or have just been following SOT for you know a decade or two, you'll know that Rick and, and company have released a million albums over the years, right? Uh, for a while there, this band was just so prolific. They were releasing one, two, three, four albums a year, cranking them out. They're one of the more unique bands. They're almost hard to classify. You know, Rick is a very, very skilled guitar player. And uh, some of his heroes are like, you know, Robin Trower, Hendrix, Marino, Zappa, that sort of thing. So he's just got a really cool, bluesy, hard rock sound that also incorporates some prog and psychedelia and jazz fusion. The band, you know, he's got, um, we got some horns on here. And it's just, it's just really good, intelligent, hard rock and pop and bits of jazz and prog. And just, it's hard to explain. But just really, really intriguing music that I've always enjoyed. Uh, this is their first album in a number of years. They're actually slowed down a little bit due to all sorts of different things, which I won't get into today. But um, again, well worth checking out if you've never investigated the Rick Ray Band. They're unlike almost anything you've ever heard before. A uh, little bit of Canterbury prog, you know, the, the little the quirky arrangements. And like I said, having the, the horns in there um, or uh, give it really interesting. And then the hard rock guitars, just really cool stuff. So again, it's Killing Time by the Rick Ray Band. And uh, if you want to check out their back catalog, there's plenty of it. Uh, the last regular release we're going to cover today is uh, this kind of a compilation uh, from Jackal. It's called 25, 25 Years from 1992 to 2017. So for those of you who uh, have, were really into music of the early 90s and early mid late 90s, Jackal kind of burst on the scene right around the time where metal was dying down and, you know, grunge was taking hold and they came with this sound that incorporated kind of that the hair metal scene from the 80s, which I know a lot of people hate, but this I'm going to use it right now, uh, with Southern Rock, because these guys are from down south. So Southern Rock meets hair metal, meets kind of grungy, uh, you know, early 90s. And, and here you have this this kind of band that really didn't sound like anybody else. And they had a gimmick. Uh, Jesse James Dupree, their lead singer and guitar player, would pull out a chainsaw and uh, on numerous songs and, and kind of play music with a chainsaw. Rawr, 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 rawr. You know, it's, it's a little ridiculous, but again, got them a lot of attention for being so freaking different. And, you know, they actually had a lot of really good tunes. So um, if you never really investigated Jackal before, other than maybe seeing them on MTV or hearing a tune on the radio, this kind of puts together a lot of their best songs. There's a couple new tunes on here as well. You know, um, let's see, what do we got here? You know, When Will It Rain... Uh, I like a lot. I think that's a great tune. Uh, Stand Alone is great. Down On Me was probably their catchiest uh, tune. Maybe their biggest hit. I'm not really sure. But those three, tune, those three tunes start off the album, and it, it, they're just uh, you know three really, really good ones. Then you got the Lumberjack, which is kind of like a bluesy boogie song. It's got the, the, the chainsaw in it. Uh, Push Comes to Shove. You know, a, a fun, fun album. This is one of those albums that you know you have, you're having a 
barbecue out back by the pool. The beers are flowing, and you just throw this on, and everybody will get into it. Really good party record. So, again, Jackal 25, celebrating 25 years of Jackal music. So with that, we're going to finish up today with Forgotten Favorites. So we're going to go back to, oh boy, I believe this is the early early 2000s. What year do we got here? 2001? Something like that. Late 90s, early 2000s. And um, this is an artist uh, who I've uh, long loved. Uh, she just has made great music for so many years. Uh, I'm actually friends with her and her husband, uh, who is a virtuoso keyboard player who right now is playing with Last in Line. I'm talking about Eric Norlander. Also has a solo career and fronts a rocket scientist. And I'm talking about Lana Lane. This is Queen of the Ocean. Just a great, great album of like epic symphonic rock. You know, Lana, she's got one of the best voices ever. Uh, a lot of people compare her to Ann Wilson of Heart. She does sound a lot like Ann, uh, but her music, totally different. It's It's symphonic. Hard rock incorporates a bit of prog, some ballads. Uh, you know, if you like big guitars, big keyboards, and just absolutely soaring female vocals, all sounding quite epic, you really can't go wrong with any Lana Lane record. Uh, but Queen of the Ocean was one of her noteworthy earlier ones, and it still resonates today. I love uh, reaching for the Lana Lane car uh, catalog every so often, and it just it kind of brings me back to like you know those uh, the '90s and the early 2000s where she was pumping them out pretty regularly, and it's just you could always expect a wonderful Lana Lane album every couple of years, if not uh, less than that. And uh, her husband Eric is always involved, so he's always there helping with the writing and the arranging and whatnot. So um, just really really quality stuff. If you've never never listened to Lana Lane, uh, I highly recommend it. You won't be disappointed. So with that, I'm going to leave you till next time. This is Pete Pardo with Sea of Tranquility. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're on YouTube, as you're watching right now. And uh, join us next time for more new music. We've got some rants coming up as well. So for now, check out all this great new music. There's a lot of really great stuff here. But don't forget the classics, folks. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.